Hello awesome people of YouTube, welcome back to another game of StarCraft 2. This is another game from the Nation Wars number 3 which concluded in January of 2015. We are going to be watching Netherlands versus Denmark, so if you are from one of these countries please leave a comment below and let me know that. We are going to be playing or watching Jonah, who is going to be representing Netherlands. He's on MCON Esports. And uh, just uh, one of his minor achievements recently has been, well, it's uh, almost two years now, it's 2014, Made in Asia, and he did get first place in that. Now, his opponent is going to be the Protoss player, Space Marine. He is representing Denmark and Team Red Bloods. Now, I had a look at his profile on, t on the wiki page for Liquid, and apparently he doesn't actually have any tournament wins or even, you know, up to fourth place. So this guy is obviously not pro, but, you know, he could, he, sorry, before I, before I diss him too much. This dude is Grandmaster. He's ranked number 23 at the moment while casting this video. So obviously not somebody to mess around with. Definitely a noteworthy player. So we're going to be watching this. And as I said, a Zerg versus Protoss, we're going to. Bring out the production tab, see what's going on here. And it does look like the Overlord about to make it down to here. Gonna be able to spot pretty much everything. Now it looks like there is a cybernetic score after one gateway. Uses a zealot to block here, so nothing special. Now, as you can see here, our Zerg player did actually opt to go for early Zerglings. So definitely doing somewhat of a rush here. Not a, not a crazy rush, but it's definitely faster than what you'd normally expect. So Zealot is now out. Definitely would want to bring this back here to block. Space Marine, please don't do this. Oh, I see. There's, so there's a block here with the pylon. Now that'll hold off for a while. He'll probably end up cancelling, cancelling it because it would make no sense to lose the extra 75 minerals. He's just delaying them right now. So there you go. There's now going to be two Zealots here. So definitely going to be safe against the Zergling Rush. Looks like we have two more gateways being thrown down. And at this point, these Zerglings are not going to really be able to do that much. Hatchery being thrown down as well. So obviously he's thinking of expanding off it. He, no he knows that at this point, there's going to be nothing he can do to get up that ramp. He's probably thinking that there could be adepts. So that's why he's not actually rushing up it. There we go, pokes up a little bit, actually man manages to catch out a probe here. That is, oh is he going to get it? <laughs> oh yes, this probe does manage to get in. Very well played here to react to that, not losing that probe, a very essential thing. Now, he looks like he's interested in getting a few adepts out, simply because he needs to wear down the Zergling army before he moves out. Now Zo uh, Jonah is actually able to, to contain him so well that he's decided to go for a double expansion here. It's something you definitely don't see very often. I mean, when you are doing a rush and then you're all of a sudden decide to do a double expand after a rush, your economy is struggling there, buddy. So it's very risky to do it, of course. But obviously he feels that he's in a good position to do so. And it's actually, I think it's going to pay off simply because right now, Space Marine is not sure what's going on with, with Jonah. He doesn't know if there's any hidden tech. His overlords are outside the base. But they haven't actually scouted the main yet. So he probably will do that very shortly with one of these overlords. But until then, he's going to have to basically macro up as hard as possible. And of course, probably bring out a 200-200 army. What is being attacked here? I'm not quite sure. Now there we go, we do have two sentries, three adepts on the way. Now this is probably going to be able to do a bit of damage. Now there was four probes lost there, I don't know where. To be honest, that is very weird. Okay, so this force is now moving out. Now note that zealots are the only real thing here that does a huge amount of damage versus versus buildings, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to get through this. Now, Guardian Shield, something I definitely don't see used often enough. Getting used here, going to be losing one of those sentries, a second one going down as well. There has been drones pulled off here, so this is actually quite significant. He might get a few of those sniped off. And at the same time, seven already killed at this point. A drop in the main, actually that's not a drop, that's the psionic transfusion, and ten drones have already been killed. Now this drop, or this 
aggression is already starting to pay off for him at this point. The double expansion off, off a rush is not paying off very well for Jonah. And there you go. Now these are quickly going to get cleaned up here. They did place themselves in a pretty nice place. But as you see, let's have a quick look at the lost units tab. 17 drones in total have been lost for Jonah already. That's including 4 earlier and 13 right now. So it looks like a warp prism on the way also. Obviously this is going to be used for more harassment. Which is pretty good. And it looks like we have a third and fourth gas geyser coming down as well. Now that's quite interesting. It means that he's probably going to start pumping out either immortals or disruptors very, very shortly. But honestly, I don't even see him needing it. Oh, sorry, Dark Templars is what he's making right now. So a bit of aggression onto this base here, as you can see. He's actually getting surrounded by a bunch of Zerglings, so a bit of a risky move. But I do think that he should be able to clean up these Zerglings. No, it looks like the Queen on the top is doing a little bit more damage than he wanted it to. So four drones taken out and losing his Adepts. Now at the same time, there is four more being warped into the main base here. And there we go, another continuous aggression is going to go off here. And this is going to start to become very significant. He's going to probably want to lift these off. Bring them on away. And keep them safe. And there we go, Zerglings are on them again. Probably wants to lift them off, bring them somewhere else. Let them regenerate a little bit of shields. 13 drones. How many is that in total now? 30 in total. So, the fact that... That Jonah double expanded out of this absolutely did not pay off for him. I think that he should have went after one base, just go for a roach all in or something like that, just to basically put on the pressure continuously. The fact that he went for, you know, an expansion just opened up all of this harassment opportunity. Now, obviously, it's not something you can predict. So, you know, he, he did take a risk. Unfortunately, it didn't quite pay off. Now, the counter damage is starting to happen now. If you'll notice here, more and more drones are also starting to drop. So, both bases being attacked currently. These Zerglings actually doing a ridiculous amount of damage. So many Zerglings versus this probe line is very difficult to deal with. But, there we go. DTs are on the map. Now, Jonah is going to be aware of this at this point as well. There we go. We do have an Overseer on the way. Now, that's inside the main base. So, not over here. There is Roaches on the field as well. But, I have to say, I have to point out the amount of workers. A tree base Zerg who has less workers than a two base Protoss that just got Zergling rushed, or not Zergling rushed, but rather nuked with a group of Zerglings, is indeed in a bad position. So look at all of these drones getting killed consistently. More and more harassment. And I have to commend Space Marine for, for this play. He's He started off pretty weak. He was stuck in his base. He managed to hold off. We did a very good pile on to block off Zerglings. And at the end of the day, he came back, and now he is in such a commanding lead right now. Look at this. 45 probes to 32 Zerg, uh, drones. Well, there's a bit more now, but you get what I mean. He's ahead, and he's a Protoss player. Definitely something you don't want to have as a Zerg. Now, these DTs, DTs I believe, are a bit of a waste of, of resources at this point. I think he actually just needs to get a bunch of Adepts, a few immortals and that's pretty much it just push on into his base and destroy everything now as you can see here more and more damage is being done with with the drop harassment there's nothing that that jonah actually has to deal with it so it looks like a third expansion is going down for space marine as you can see he's still a little bit ahead on workers so that is definitely significant for him now these adepts getting cleaned up here, but of course reinforcements is coming, so one of them does survive. And I have to say that right now, the way I feel this game is going, Space Marine is in a very, very good position. The only thing that I have to say is that he probably should be pushing out a little bit earlier. I mean, all there is here is a few roaches and a bunch of zerglings. Now there is the zergling run by, oh my god, they're getting all the way into the main base. Now there's only eight probes effectively mining there and there we go the surround going off there taking a few a few of those out but at the same time is about to lose all of his zerglings here as well the probes fighting for their life and looks like only eight probes got taken out now if you consider the fact that there was eight probes there already then at that point or eight probes mining then the eight that were killed were actually redundant so that's fine. As I said, there we go. The massive push here from the Protoss army could not be held off and GG has been called. Space Marine takes number one 
uh, game number one, and that's for Denmark. So one to zero. And we're going to move on to game number two. And that's pretty much it for game number one. Space Marine doing very, very well there to recognize that Jonah wasn't going to be able to defend against his early aggression. Uh, well, not early, but rather after defending against an all-in and double expansion. I think it was a little bit rushed to double expand out of that. So that's pretty much it. I hope you have enjoyed that game. Please leave it a thumbs up if you did. And I'll see you guys in the next game, which is map number two.